tools that I use. So today I'd like to share with you what's in my toolbox. So the toolbox itself is this traditional style metal toolbox which concertinas open like that and I keep this in front of my desk at the side of my chair and it's usually open like that so I can grab whatever I need quickly and easily and as I'm limited for actual desk space I quite often set a plastic tray like that across the handles and that will create a bit of a desk extension so I could sit projects on there while I'm working on something else or I can put things on there to dry so that comes in quite handy. Okay, so let's have a look inside. I must admit I have given my toolbox a tidy and a clean for the sake of this video. It's not always quite as orderly as this. So I took everything out and vacuumed the trays, which is a good idea to do every so often, as there was a lot of wood dust collected in the bottoms. And I also found one or two bits I thought I'd lost, drawer handles and things that had rolled off my desk at some point. Having said that, I am careful to keep everything in this particular order, so whenever I want anything, I know exactly which section to go to without having to rummage around for things. So I just want to start by emptying out this first section. And I just want to show you this um, liner that I've got in each section, and it's like a sort of rubbery type um, liner and it's just called toolbox liner and it comes in sheets or rolls and you just cut it to size and I've lined e each section with some of that and that will stop the tools from moving around um, which is especially handy if you tend to carry your toolbox around and also it acts as a bit of a silencer so you don't get that loud clang every time you put something back in. And the other thing I keep in my toolbox is these little silica gel um, envelopes. And these come in things like um, new shoes and certain types of packages. And it just stops things from getting damp. So every time I get a package with one of those in, I just pop it inside my toolbox. And I've probably got a couple in each um, of the other sections. So in this first section, I keep a large selection of brushes. And I've just sorted them with elastic bands into sort of small, medium and large. I've also then got these um, even larger brushes which I use for um, maybe painting inside the doll's house or larger areas. They go in there as well. And then I've got um, brushes that I sort of specifically use for glue. Always make sure to wash those out straight away. And then I've got this two inch brush here which I use um, to remove dust um, after sanding. Keep that in there as well. I've also got um, these wire brushes and you may have seen me use these in my doll's house kitchen to create some markings on the beams that I used for the ceiling just to sort of rough them up a bit and make them look like um, they had a lot of wood grain in them and to make them look quite old. So, and they come in handy for lots of things as well. They're really good for cleaning and things like that. So they go in there as well. There's another glue brush there. I also keep a couple of uh, toothbrushes, old toothbrushes, um, in the toolbox and again they come come in handy for creating effects in paint um, on wood and other materials and also for cleaning and in this first section I've also got um, a handful of coffee stirrers which have so many uses and I use them for stirring paint but you can also use them for um, making miniatures with as well so they're quite handy so in this section over here I keep my scissors and I have various pairs for different um, jobs. So I always keep this pair here for um, cutting double sided tape because it tends to make the blades rather sticky but then every so often I'll just clean those off um, either using sort of degreaser or um, warm soapy water 
and that just cleans those off. I keep some scissors in there um, specifically for paper. And then these magic scissors um, are really good for cutting everything else. They cut um, mesh, aluminium and brass, um, but they also cut fabric and paper. Um, that it's a really good all-round scissor and I've been using it for quite a while and it's still sharp, still works um, really well. So that's quite good. I also keep in here, um, this is my old electrical tool which I used to use as a scribe and it's so old now that it cracked all along the handle but I've taped it up because I still like to use it for certain things and then my newer scribe which is far more robust and better um, for etching into wood to create mouldings and things like that and I always keep the cap on there because that's quite sharp also in there I've got this really um, robust scribe and it depends really on what, what you're scribing into. If I was sort of scribing into um, metal I would use this one and it's a really sort of tough, um, it's called a machinist scribe, really hard wearing one. Also in there I've got my craft knives. Now this one I do usually keep in the desk tidy on my desk and this is my Swan Morton knife which you all know I, I use and is my preferred sort of craft knife. And then I also keep a spare handle um, in the box. Now this, um, this particular type of craft knife I've been using since I started making miniatures and this this one is um, fairly new, probably about a year old, but before that the one I had been using lasted me for probably a good 12 years. And the thing that happened was this um, piece of metal here actually snapped. Um, so I keep this in the box just in case this ever snapped and I really wouldn't be able to be without my craft knife. So that's in there as well, another packet of gel in there. I also keep my um, steel rules in here um, and I use a 12 inch rule but I also have this little 6 inch rule which comes in handy when you're measuring in small areas um, especially for things like measuring um, drawer openings to then cut the pieces that you need for drawers and things like that. So that's those pop those back in there. I've also got a couple of dust masks in there um, which you should wear when you're um, sanding so that you don't breathe in too much um, sanding dust. And I also keep in there um, electrical wire and this comes in quite handy for a lot of projects as well. And I've got various different gauges on there and before I tidied out my toolbox I didn't realise I already had that so I went and bought another one and then I've bought another one um, and this is a, a thicker type of wire. So that's why it's good to keep your toolbox tidy as well because then you know what you've got and you don't sort of duplicate things. I've got a small tape measure in here and whenever I sort of go out I take that with me in case I see a piece of furniture I want to make and then I can just do some quick measuring. That just goes in my pocket. I've also got in here um, a black permanent marker pen and I use that for colouring wood, um, especially in miniature projects. I've also got a wood finish marker and this is good if you've, um, your varnish has chipped or something like that. This is a dark walnut one but it works really well on tiny little areas of wood where the varnish has chipped off and things like that or hasn't covered because of the glue. And then also I've got a gold marker in there as well for miniature projects. And also in that tray I have a compass and that's good for miniature projects as well or if you need to cut um, circles out of wood and things like that. Okay so I've just whipped the toolbox round so we can get into this side a bit more easily. And over here I keep all of my um, mini clamps. I've got a few different types, these plastic ones which are really strong. And then I've got these spring clamps as well. And because they've got the thinner end, they're good for sort of clamping top parts um, to furniture and things like that. 
I've also got in here a couple of um, tea light candles and this is handy when you're using um, a mitre block and saw and if the saw isn't um, sort of sliding through as easily as it should you can just rub some of this along the blade and that helps it to glide more smoothly. That's always handy to have. Also, along with my clamps there, I've got a selection of bulldog clips in different sizes. And these I wouldn't use on wood because they're sort of quite strong and they may dent um, the wood, but I would use them for miniature projects. I use these for clamping cord um, to the edge of my desk or the edge of my cutting mat when I want to make plaits and things like that. And again, I've got a few different sizes in there and different types. These are really good if you sort of need to stick cardboard together and things like that for clamping it while the glue is drying. And also in there, I've got a few different types of tweezers. I've got one with a really sort of thin pointed end and then I've got the slanted end tweezer. And these are all good for um, sort of handling small components, especially when you're fitting door or drawer knobs and things like that. And then I've also got these. And these, again, are a fine tipped tweezer and they've got that um, magnifying glass on them if you're handling sort of particularly small items. And then down this end I keep a couple of old um, teaspoons and I use those for mixing paint. If you're creating your own paint or varnish colours or wood dye colours it's good to sort of measure it out accurately and then to keep a note of what you've used and these just really help to do that like measuring spoons really. I've also got in here um, some glue spreaders handy when you're sort of applying glue to larger areas. I've got a um, spirit level and these miniature ones are really good for doll's house furniture. The thing you need to do is to make sure that the surface um, you're putting the actual piece of furniture on is level to start with. If you've got a desk on a carpet you might not have a level surface anyway and then you'll be forever trying to get the piece of furniture um, level fighting a losing battle so just make sure you're actually using it on a level surface to start but that's really handy for making sure that the piece is going to sit straight and then lastly in there I've got a set um, of embossing tools or styluses and I find that really useful for um, if you're sort of making your own handles using brass or aluminium sheet these can be used to shape them but lots of other uses as well for embossers so that sits in there as well and then in this next one down I keep my mini hand drill my drill bits and also my pin vise or pin drill they sit in there I've got a spare box of cocktail sticks, which you all know I use for applying my glue. So I always have one open on my desk and one spare in my toolbox. I've got a couple of flathead screwdrivers, and this larger one I use for opening tins of paint, and the smaller one I use for scoring grooves um, into wood, along with my steel rule. I've also got a hollow punch set. Now I haven't actually used um, this one yet and somebody has asked me about um, sort of demonstrating this tool so that's something I will do in a later video. Just pop those there. I've also got here a lovely set of metal files and they come in really handy um, when you need to shape small areas and things like that getting into hard to reach areas. And another thing um, here which I don't use um, very often at all is this wonderful um, set of chisels. And I think it's a set of 10 so I've got every sort of shape to do lots of different carving with and that is something I would really love to do. I love to see carved wood so that is something I would love to learn to do but I do use them for the odd project. 
OK, so moving now into the bottom uh, central section of the toolbox, and this is where all, I keep all the sort of larger tools. I've got these ratchet clamps, and I've got four of those, and they come in really handy when you're securing larger pieces of furniture while the glue is drying. You might need to secure it from top to bottom, and you've got a six inch um, opening there. I've also got my old mitre tool. Now this one isn't as good as the new sort of handheld mitre guillotine. So this one I use most of the time, but I've kept this one for things where I think maybe I might end up damaging the blade or I'm using a particularly thick piece of strip wood or something. I use the older one and this one I keep for thinner strip wood and thinner pieces of wood. And I keep the sort of um, angle plate attached to it because that's what I use it for most often for creating the mitre joins. Also in here I've got my pliers, good old trusty pair of pliers. I keep my um, desk vise in here too. Whenever I'm working on a piece of furniture, it's normally attached to the desk, but when you're not using it, it can be quite annoying and I'm forever banging my elbow on it. So if I'm not using it, I just tuck it inside the toolbox and I leave that tissue paper in there until it gets really raggy. And that's just to stop the jaws of the vise from denting um, wood, especially when you use soft wood. It can leave a mark on the wood, so I'll just tuck a piece of tissue in there. I've also got in there a uh, set square and again I use that fairly often just for making sure shelves and things like that are straight and you can get them a lot smaller than that as well. My full size um, tape measure and I often like to measure full size pieces of furniture just to make sure I'm scaling them down correctly so that's in there. My mitre block and saw and that comes with a couple of um, different sized blades there. This is the one I use more frequently. And again, that's for cutting strip wood or cutting mitre joints into wood. I would usually use the handheld guillotine just for um, general strip wood. And then this I would use for cutting skirting boards or coving things where you need an angle in the thinner edge. So that's that, and I've got a spare um, handle as well in there for the saw, just in case. I keep my current roll of masking tape in there, and then I've got some backup rolls in the drawer of my desk. The blades um, for my Swan Morton knife, and these are size 10A blades. And because I use so many of them, I buy them in these large um, packs. I think there's 20 packs of five in there. And then something which I don't really use anymore, but I keep it um, just because I sort of started out with this. And I think actually my mother-in-law gave it to me. It's like a corporate um, little toolbox thing, if I can get it open. I'm trying to open it without everything going everywhere. And it's a lovely little thing. I It's got this little awl in it, which I used to use um, for making holes in um, floorboards and things like that. The little saw now, you can see the blade is quite bent. These come in quite handy for certain jobs. Little tape measure in there. So I, I don't really use it anymore. Um, but I just like to keep hold of it because it's such a lovely little little thing. And that just tucks in that corner down there so it's not in the way. And I think that's everything. Most of those tools that I shared with you there can be found for sale in my Etsy shop, so I'll pop a link below. I hope you've enjoyed that look inside my toolbox, and if there's a particular hand tool that you use for miniature work that I haven't mentioned, do let me know in the comments below. Or perhaps you've even made your own tool for a specific job because you couldn't buy something small enough or something that did exactly what you needed it to. If so, let me know. I look forward to reading your comments. And for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!